Ta-da! <laughs> Better had you all fooled for a moment. You thought it wasn't happening, didn't you? Hello! <laughs> Welcome to Live Irish Myths. I'm Anthony Murphy, the Invisible Man. Do you like my Aaron jumper? Easily knowing we're coming into winter here in Ireland. It's getting cold. Good evening, one and all. <laughs> uh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the practical joke written me, yes. Uh, anyway, a very good evening to you all, where we are uh, preparing for Live Irish Myths episode 120. I have to be honest, tonight I'm winging it a little bit. You'd imagine this is an area of uh, considerable knowledge and expertise for me, but you might be surprised. And there's very good reasons for that, which we'll, we'll explore in all good time. Anyway, I hope you're all in good form. Hope everybody is safe and well. Emphasis on well given everything that's going on. Uh, I should say that the YouTubers have been here for a while. They've been having a good long chinwag amongst themselves for the past while. Pardon me, which is great to see. I almost feel like I'm interrupting. So it's delightful to see all the interaction. So um, a quick hello to Daisy Peters, uh, our most probably prompt YouTuber. Uh, Daisy, hope you're keeping well. Um, today is a holiday here. Woo! I'm really looking forward to this special episode. Good stuff. Seamus Mara says, well, clan, how's yous? Well, I think they're in good form, Seamus, but speaking for myself, certainly. Sandrine Brady says, bonsoir, Anthony and the two, a lovely subject for tonight's episode. I might even say that I'm over the moon. <laughs> Great to be with you all. Uh, Ms. Marion says, hello, all beautiful, blessed day in Alameda, California. Thank you, Sir Anthony. Well, thank you, Marion, or Ms. Marion. Thank you and welcome along. Hope you're keeping safe and well. Mandy McCurl says hello, everyone, and hope you're all staying well. Brewing hot chocolate to sip from my new range mug as the wind howls outside. Sounds very nice. Pass some over, except for you can't because it might, you know, I was going to say it might have COVID on it. That's not even funny. Um, Sylvia Sanchez says hello, everyone. Seems like I'm early today. Yeah, at four minutes to eight. Uh, only a few minutes. Carl Deegan, but you're very welcome along, Sylvia. The Jirich Trinonawa. Carl Deegan says, hello all, Jirich Uli. Who, who constellations in Irish mythology? Savage stuff, love it. Space is a fascinating thing to think about. Mind-boggling. Lauer arrived last week. Anton, Goromahagod. Brilliant stuff, Carl. Hope you greatly enjoy it. Jackie Stevenson says, hello, Anthony and the wonderful two. I'm glad to be here, as I missed last week. Not to worry. Uh, we're very glad to have you along. The full Irish GK is in the house. Toronto, good evening to all. Another fine day on the sod. Yes, a little bit cool, but, you know, Josie Weatherford says, Hi, Anthony. Can you do the tale for us for Samhain? A tale, nearest supernatural adventure with Maeve and the cave of Rathcrohan as he goes into the underworld. Ooh, ooh otherworld. Interesting suggestion, yes. Dara Kiernan says, Halloween decorations are up and ready to sit back and enjoy tonight's show. Samhain, Hona. Eve. Yeah, their fireworks have been going on, on off here for bloody weeks, and it's still a few weeks till Halloween. Janet Moran is the first of the commenters tonight and says, ha, 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 <laughs> which is to do with more of my magical appearing act. Jules Cousins is in the house. Hello. Jennifer Foley says, oh, hi, lol. <laughs> Donna, Donna Jean Porter says, hi. Kristen Murray Andre says, lol. Neil Hughes says, it's the Clancy brother. <laughs> Joanne Wolf says, love this. Sorry, I will I will calm down after a few minutes. Barbara Barney says, hi, Anthony, and hi, everyone. Hello, indeed. Aaron Durrett says, very funny, Anthony. <laughs> yes, I always thought there was a career in comedy for me. And I don't mean on the stage. I mean, you know, sweeping up the stage after the comedy acts have left. Kristen Murray Andre says, hi, all, Jigach. Patricia McAteer says, ha ha, hello everyone, hi Patricia. Anne Scott Doherty says, hello everyone, beautiful day here in Southern Oregon. Very nice, and very nice to see you, you're welcome. There you are, Anthony says, Janet. Yvette Tillema says, hi all, very exciting. Mm. I hope you don't get too excited. Maria Rodriguez Doyle says, hello, love from Spain. Hello, Maria, grow more art. Oh, oh, na tua galer. Adina Sparks says, afternoon, Anthony, and the Tua. Indeed to you, Adina. Tom King is in the house. Nick S. Casterton says, hi, Anthony. Hope you and all the amazing two are keeping well and safe. Really like the jumper. Glad you think. This is genuine Irish Aaron jumper. This is this is top style. All I'm missing is the tweed cap and the and the tobacco pipe. Clay, a clay tobacco pipe. Aaron Durrett says, love to the Tua. So happy to see you all here. Isn't it brilliant? Ormond Rick Casterton. 
No, is that a new name? Evening, Anthony and Tua. Fault you. Is that one of the Caster Castertons, as in Alex and Nick? Jackie says, hello, Fasco Watt, Anthony, August Tua. Hello, Jackie Fault you. Laura Odometro is in the house. You have a different kind of cold that warms the hearts. Good to see you, Anthony. Uh, yes, indeed, Laura. It's been a while. Uh, how's life in Blessington? Good evening to you. Welcome along. Paula Snow Queen is waving. Hello, Paula. Martin Dohany says, hello, Anthony, and all the Tua. Indeed, hello to you, Martin. Miriam, Maga is it Magod? Says, hi again from France. Hope you're well. Take care of you. Uh, bonsoir, Miriam, and uh, welcome along again. Uh, CC Lete says, hello from Normandy. Lovely, brilliant. We have a few um, viewers from France this evening, which is fantastic. Kristen says, jumpers are needed in Chicago too, Anthony. Hope everyone is keeping cozy. Well, do you know what? This is a guaranteed way to stay warm. I mean, this is, I think it's sheep's wool, you know, and it's, it's, um, it's like an extra layer, you know, it's, it's really nice. Kelly Edmiston says, hello, my tour of the stars. Yes, indeed. L.M. Moore, whose name is Linda, says, Giorive, great jumper. Thank you, Linda. Rogue Vulcan says, hey, hey, from Miami. Hey, hey, to yourself, Rogue. Good evening. Morwina Blog says, hi, from Australia. Brilliant. What time of the day is it there, Morwina? It is, as I always say, it must be ridiculous o'clock there, but a very good Tuesday morning to you from Monday evening in the Boyne Valley. Doris O'Hara says, hi, Anthony and everyone. Hello, Doris. Ralph Waldron says, Tononoa, oa League, I presume it's supposed to be autocorrect, Ralph. Good evening, Ralph. Hope you're well. Daniel Fagan says greetings from Arma. Loving the episodes and learning lots. Keeper lit, Mahara. Thanks, Daniel. I'm glad to know that you're learning lots. Do you know what? I'm learning every day. Catherine Hunt. Love the jumper. Nice to see you. Thanks, Catherine. Glad you like it. Welcome along. Michelle Rhodes says, evening, Anthony, from Drech, Sheffield. Love the Aaron. It's stylish. I'm glad you like it. Myself and my wife bought one uh, uh, a while back. And uh, because the shops were closed, we bought one online from an Irish uh, company. And uh, I got the, the traditional sort of whitish, creamish, off-white. And she got a green one. And I have to say, I really like hers too. Wendy Holmes says, hi, Anthony. Hello, Wendy. Joe Butler is in the house, says, hello, Tua. Looking forward to our weekly time. You're very welcome along, Joe. Nice to see you. Mariana Dunn says, greetings, dear Tua and Anthony from rainy Virginia. We had rain last night and it's been quite uh, bright today. I love, I mean, I don't mind winter. Those bright cold days are better than those warm wet days, I think, generally. It's always nice to see the sun. Wendy Holmes, haven't been able to be here live and so happy to be here. Hello, Tua. Great to see you back, Wendy. Fault you. Grab a pew. Make yourself a dram or a brew or whatever you're having, you know. Imagine yourself around a warm, crackling turf fire in an old whitewashed cottage on the Atlantic coast somewhere in Connemara. And we're all about to sit down and have re-raw, August rule you Oh, Alwyn Roy Badzek is in the house. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Tua. Looking forward to stargazing tonight. Yes, yeah, a nice night out here, by the way. For those of you in Ireland and probably in Britain and, and France as well, uh, Jupiter and Saturn are close together in the south. And right now, low in the east, Mars, the red planet, which in the past few days has been at its closest approach to Earth in a while. So it's very bright, beautiful sort of reddish colour. Neil Hughes, Trenonoa, Anthony from Coatbridge, Scotland, Mary and Neil, already with Te August Fion. Oh, give us some of that Fion. Fion Jarrog. No, uh, Fion Bon. Fian Bon, but wait, Lum, Fian Bon, uh, Neil, uh, Marsha de Holly. Bethany Cutler says, Hello, Tua, Falchi, Bethany, welcome back. Anne McCallum is in the house. Hello, Anthony and the Mighty Tua. No better way to spend part of the Canadian Thanksgiving Day, especially since we're under greater restrictions because sadly our numbers are way up. Well, that makes two of us, Anne, a very happy uh, Canadian Thanksgiving Day to you. And welcome along. And yeah, hopefully we'll all enjoy our little bit of time together. Peter Kennedy says, good evening to you, Anthony, from Bolia Brigine in Cundai, uh, oh, clear. I was going to say Cundai Art League. I was thinking of Ralph. Cundai Art clear. Rex Fortenbury says, greetings, Anthony and the tour, listening while spring cleaning, procrastinated. Spring cleaning, procrastinated. Spring clean. Is it up? Hang on, Rex. Depends on where you are. 
I mean, spring cleaning in autumn is very, very procrastinated. That's a really long finger. <laughs> Good evening to you. Brendan Byrne says, what's tonight's story? Best wishes for Glendalough. Brendan, we're talking about, well, I hope so. We're talking about constellations, the stars in Irish mythology. Gillian Gogarty is watching our nearest visitors, vis uh, viewer even. Um, someone whose name I think is in Hebrew says hello to you. And it's sunny here in Jerusalem mountains during the day. Fantastic stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but uh, welcome along. Great to see you. Carol Barrett says, hi all. Banachti from Galway. Hello, Carol. Nice to talk to you today. Tom King says, hello, Anthony. And all the mighty to another week rolls over and it's story time. Hope all in good form, all in great form, especially uplifted by your wonderful pictures. The one of you lying on your back on the anvil, Tom. That's just a cracking picture. Helen Colgan says, tuning in from beautiful County Neath. Leah and Helen. Well, hello, Leah and Helen in Hyundai, me, August just over the road there, a few hundred yards away, and I can't get into it. So enjoy the time that you have in me. Probably the. Don't let any of the other Louthians hear me saying this, but me, this is probably the best county you could be locked down in. Shh, I didn't say that. Shirley Sheila Barr. And it's warm here during daytime on the Jerusalem mountains. I would say so, of course. Uh, it, it was, I think, about maximum 12 degrees here in Ireland today. Um, it's Winter is coming. Hello from all from Autumny. Is that a word? Northwest Connecticut. By the way, great sweater, says Susan Scott. Thanks, Susan. Uh, autumnal, I think, would be the word. But Autumny is a good word. We, I don't mind making up words as we go along. Brian Boylan says hiya. Hello, Brian. Nice to see you. Connie Reader is in Austin. Uh, presumably presumably that is the Austin that is in Texas. Connie, good evening to you. Barb Jordan says, hi everyone. Hello, Barb. Kristen Murray Andre, Daniel of the wonderful photographs. Oh yes, indeed. Oh, okay. Orman Reek Casterton says, it's Alex Anthony. I've changed my name to a more better name of my understanding. Oh, okay. Grant. At least I know it's you. And it's not an imposter. That's the main thing. Patrick Joseph McKenna says, how are you? From Angalyev, from Galway. We're all in great form, Patrick, by the looks of it. Stuart Gormley is in the house. Launch, Anthony, and hope all is well during the lockdown. Again. We're doing our best to keep our spirits up, especially now this time we're facing into winter. Last time we were in spring heading into summer. So we'll keep the fingers crossed that everybody behaves themselves and we can suppress these numbers again and life can get back to a little bit of normality. Brian Boylan says, no jumpers needed here. Well, well for you. Sandra Boothroyd says, evening, sir, from Spain. Hello, Sandra. Buenas noches. <clears throat> Desiree Riley is in the house, says, hi, Anthony and the Tua. So happy to be here. Thank you all for so much for your kind thoughts and prayers for me and my family during our second hurricane in six weeks. Yeah, I'm very glad that you got away out of that one safely i think you were staying in your sister's house and you came back and you were one of the few people who had power and none of the trees had blown over brilliant delighted to hear it stay safe morwina blog says it's 6 a.m ah, it's not too bad but probably an hour earlier than i'd like to be two hours earlier than i'd like to get out of bed myself but anyway let's say nothing joanne anderson says hi from calgary alberta in canada hello joanne always delighted to see the canadian uh, myth flixers in the house. Larissa Kama says, chilly greetings to Anthony and my beloved Tua from Portland, Oregon. I hope everyone is doing well. And so good to see everyone here today. Hello, Larissa. Great to see you back. Brandy Jean says, blessings from southwestern Washington State. Hello, Brandy. Uh, how are things over on the West Coast? Alan Taff. Hello from Leon. Still in hospital, but getting there. Have to order the book. I hope you are making a good and steady recovery. Alan, all our very best wishes from all of the uh, Tua here on Live Irish Mits. Hopefully you'll get out soon. Eamon O'Brien says, Sáan Hónadit Anthony Eamon Bália Áclí. Hello, Eamon, in Dublin. I was in Dublin today, legally. I had uh, to bring my daughter to one of the hospitals in Dublin for an appointment. So uh, I, was, I was legally allowed. So there you go. I had to cross through County Meath as well. I couldn't go by New Grange. I think that would be cheating. Paul Garron is in the house. Hello, Paul. Ah, Morwina says it's daylight savings. Makes a bit of a difference. Ah, okay. So it would be 5 a.m. otherwise. Yeah, fair enough. Brendan Byrne, the story of the jumper is a little sad because each island family has a different style. So if they lost someone to the sea, they could identify them 
when the sea gave them back. Oh, right. Wow. Fascinating. Didn't know that. Kimberly, I didn't actually genuinely didn't know that. Kimberly Field Sipola says, Hi, Anthony and Tua Fall, Jim Mara, Elaine O'Grady is in the house. Hi, Anthony. Blessings from the Rocky Burren in the West. Did you know? Of course you do. But uh, for the other viewers, the, the Burren has its own microclimate and its own microflora and fauna. It, it's like a, a whole different natural world over there. It's brilliant. Beautiful part of the world, although I'm sure at times quite cold and wet and windy and all the rest. But sure, that's Ireland, isn't it? You know. Samantha Healy says, good evening, too. Looking forward to tonight's sesh. <laughs> I didn't know. Well, sure. Come here. Fill me in on the sesh. Apparently, I saw a headline today saying the Gardaí, the Irish police, for those of you who don't know who the Garda Siachana are, that's Irish for guardians of the peace. That's what we call our police force. They raided a number of Shabins, one of which was in Meath and one in Westmeath. Um, they're uh, illegal drinking dens, basically, because a lot of the pubs are closed, you know. Catherine Hupp says, greetings from Colorado. Yay for Jupiter. Yes, indeed. Hello. Catherine, Samantha Healy says, hello, Anthony Falchi. Uh, Teresa Valenzuela says, hello from Malaga. Hello, Teresa. We would love to have been flying into Malaga during the summer to, to go on a holiday to Nurka, which we love. But unfortunately, we didn't make it this year, but maybe we'll see you uh, next year. Mark Gordon says, good day from Iowa, preparing for winter. Yes, indeed. The old winter jumpers are coming out of the... the uh, the wardrobe. Marianne Cheek Knapp says, hello, Anthony from North Carolina. Just got your drone henge book. So excited to read it. Brilliant stuff, Marianne. Glad to hear it arrived safely. And I hope you enjoy the telling of the story. Katrina Matthews Channing says, fab, looking forward to this one. Afternoon, everyone. Hello, Katrina Falcha. Bernadette McCafferty says, hi from Donegal. Falcha, Bernadette. Donna Jean says it's still hot in North Texas. I imagine it's hot in Texas most of the year. So lucky you in a way. But uh, ah, I, I would say variety is the spice of life, but that's just an Irish man's way of saying I'm jealous of your weather. <laughs> Vicky Wallace Sullivan is in the house. Love, hello, lo, hello, my lovely friends. We had rain. Hello, Vicky and Evan and Ian and Chili. Hello to you all. Hope you're safe and well. Connie Reader says it's hot in Austin, Texas. Yeah. You see what I mean? I think Texas is hot all year round. And I've never been there, but um, I would love to go. Paul Garron is saying hello to everybody. Hello, Paul. Karen Faye O'Loughlin says hi from Boulder, Colorado. Got my book ordered. Hope it will come in time for my... Excuse me. False alarm sneeze. In time for my Indian summer birthday. Brilliant stuff, Karen. Ho I hope so, too. At the moment, actually, I was really surprised. Some of the books, uh, the Island of the Setting Sun pre-orders, uh, when I got them here and I posted them, some of them started to arrive six days after they left here, which was very good. Some of them are taking seven, eight, nine, ten days. Uh, so you might you might get it in a week, you know. Sirsha ni Chandel says, Hi, Anthony August Natua. Tomwich eg tnu la folum fui na railti August na railt voyanta. Gomara na railti er grinu anucht. Well, I hope that we learn something about the stars tonight, but I can't promise you it will be a whole lot. Mark Munoz says, well, hello all. It's been a while, but hello from New Mexico. Yes, indeed, Mark. Welcome back. Lovely to see you as always. Daniel Fagan. Uh, is saying that Daniel is the one whose photograph of Awan Macha, wasn't it, uh, was shared today. Lovely photograph, Daniel. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I hope I'm not wrong. Porik Baines is watching. Hello, Porik. Oh, dear. This is just, uh, this is a busy one, isn't it? Trasa Nagula says hi from Mayo. Hello, Trasa. Welcome to the house. Make yourself warm and comfortable. Steve Martinson says, yay, yeah, just made it home from the dentist. So glad to be here live for today's episode. Be safe. Be well, everyone. And same to you, Steve. Hope the mouth isn't uh, numb slash sore slash in a state of um, leaving you not able to eat and drink. Idina Sparks says hello. Uh, Pilar Goldstein D Day says hello from chilly, rainy Massachusetts. Sounds very Irish, Pilar, but good evening to you. Natasha Komiski is in Ockram in County Wicklow and says, hello, Falja, Natasha, Falja, welcome along. 
Martin Doheny says, many thanks, Anthony. I got my signed copy of your book in the post. I think it's been lovely the way people have been taking photographs of their newly arrived books and sharing them on the Mythical Ireland community. It's been it's been very uplifting, very heartwarming, I'll tell you. Um, Mr. Mirzamp Ampino, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, says, hello from Gloucester. Hello, indeed, to you. Welcome. Tarini Pendleton is in the house, says, Banachti, all Banachti, Tusa Fein, uh, Ort Fein, Tarini. Rihanna Lund says, hello, hailing from Bristol, UK. New to the page, but loving it. Looking longingly across the waters to Ireland and hoping to be there again someday soon. Well, hello, Rihanna. And uh, yeah, Bristol is where I fly into when I'm going to Glastonbury, lovely part of the world. Porrick Bourne says hi from Port Arlington in County Leash. Hello, Porrick. Good evening to you. Welcome along. Noli Nealon says, this is the best kind of sesh. Well, do you know what? Now, if one or two of you are sneaking a bit of pochin around the back, I won't say anything. I won't be calling the guardians of the peace if you have your own little shabine going on in the back room. I'll say nothing. It's just between, it's between us. Uh, Bianca, is it Fakel? Fachel says, good evening from Knockrohery in County Roscommon. Hello, Bianca. Fault you. Welcome along. Wow. Hi. A few, a few new faces tonight. Everybody is extremely welcome. It's lovely to see you all. Cy B says hi from Limerick. Looking forward to this talk. Hello, Cy. Teresa Lind Valenzuela says great hope. So Nurka is a fab place to spend the summertime. Cross my fingers. Yeah, I think everybody's got their fingers crossed. Uh, you know, at the moment, Jennifer Foley says I'm cold here in Michigan. You need, you need to get one of the L. Uh, Gyanzi, uh, the Irish Gyanzi. Neil Hughes uh, says, I'm wearing uh, the Clancy sweater. Am I giving you a song? You wouldn't want to hear me sing. I think I think the audience numbers would plummet fairly rapidly. Daniel Fagan says, yes, you're spot on. That is Awan Maka. Brilliant. Brady M. Tussey says, yeah, I made it. Hi, Anthony. Hope all is well. All is good. Brady, all in good form. And a uh, great crowd in tonight. Catherine Woodruff says, hello all. Fall to Catherine. Barbara Murphy says, hi, Tua, made it. Everyone will understand, dropped off 12 boxes of books for our library to sell. Brilliant stuff, Barbara. And uh, another Murphy in the house and another Murphy with loads of books. Uh, brilliant stuff. I mean, you sound like you're a member of the family, you know. Can I donate a print for you, says Brian. Hmm. Yes, of course. No problem. Send us an email or a private message on Facebook and we'll have a chat about that, Brian. But yeah, of course, no problem. Who am I missing on YouTube? Oh, ooh, I missed a few anyway. Um, Teresa Collins, not, not sure if I said hello to you earlier. Uh, looking forward to this. Good stuff, Teresa. John Main is in the house from a finally sunny San Francisco. Good to hear it, John. Toshe Grienvar in you. Connor Pockle says, Giorgiv Anton August Tua Mintflix, Banakti Ogalyev. Hope you're all keeping safe. Yeah, all in good form, Connor. Archaeoastronomy Database, who I think is Marcus, uh, says, Hi all, glad to be here. No, am I right, Marcus? You're going to have to start telling me your name every time you sign in. I can never remember it. That's terrible. You think I'd know it at this stage? Needless to say, I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> Sylvia Sanchez says, I used to have a jumper like that, but I left it in Belfast. I miss it sometimes. Imagine someone's going around Belfast now wearing your, your Gansey. Uh, the Woodsies in Honest Boys are saying, party on, Anto. <laughs> uh, uh, if there's a party in your house, I don't have to cross any county boundaries to go there, but I may be breaking other rules if I do. I'd have to certainly have to wear a mask. Anyway, I think that's it. Elaine Dent Lingenfelter is in the house as well. Emer Galvin is here, cozy and looking forward to tonight's story. It seems a lot of people are in the house, uh, partly probably because um, they're uh, enjoying the uh, uh, they're indoors out of the cold. I'd say that's what it is. So 24 minutes, very briefly, before we start the episode proper, a few announcements. Whew, um I wanted to say thanks for all the wonderful suggestions for episodes. Uh, I did reach out yesterday and say anybody got suggestions and quite a number of suggestions were made. This is the one that I picked out of the suggestions because a few people made it. But don't worry, the other suggestions have been noted and we'll try and get round to them as much as possible over the next while. Erica Bow is in the house and says good afternoon. Hello. Janet says, my final college undergraduate class was astronomy. Thanks to, oh yeah, I have to say thanks to Dark Moon Art DE on Pixabay for the lovely constellation image that is the backdrop for today's 
uh, Live Irish Myths graphic. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I wanted to say hello to M. That's E.M., who is the latest uh, Mythical Ireland patron who joined uh, yesterday on Sunday. Uh, and don't forget that if you too wish to become a patron of Mythical Ireland, you can do so on patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. So I have to put that announcement in at the beginning of every episode. If you want to become a patron and get rewards, uh, some people have been receiving their uh, free Mythical Ireland mugs at a certain level of patronage. I must share a picture or two. I was sent a picture or two of, of the mug, and I must uh, show you what that's like. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm just pasting the link to Patreon there as a comment. Oh, the 2021 calendar. Uh, to say thanks, everybody, um, for all the pre-orders. Um, I was going to send it to print on Friday, but then I realized I should really take my time on proofreading it and make sure to dot all the I's and cross all the T's and that. And in any case, uh, the schedule was originally to have it uh, out in the post in mid-November. And so if I sent it to print uh, this week, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be out in the post to as long before uh, Halloween. Um, so I just want to spend just a little bit of time making sure everything is absolutely right. Anyway, there's a link to it there as a comment to where you can order, pre-order the calendar. Don't forget that all pre-orders, that is until the moment that the printed copies arrive here, and it'll take about 10 days to print. Uh, everybody who pre-orders a copy is entered into a draw, uh, a free draw for the book, uh, The Field Names of County Meath, which we did a special live stream about the other night. Uh, that book is out of print uh, and is very valuable. Uh, and so I have a, I acquired a, a copy of it and I'm going to raffle that. All of the people who pre-ordered the calendar, every one of you from the big very first pre-order until the day that the calendars arrive here into my hands, everybody who pre-orders will be entered. Their name will be entered into a draw for the field names of County Meath book. And finally, Island 2020. A cop I have copies here signed by both authors, uh, but just to be aware that they are fairly flying out the door. And so you'll see on the authors on this on the inside title page, the two authors' signatures are there. I do have copies, but they're going. So with the lockdown, the way things are, I'm not guaranteed to be able to get more copies. Um, so if you want one, don't forget to put your order in. Anyway, I think that's all of the announcements for now. I'll just, again, paste in a link to where you can order your double signed copy signed by both authors of Island of the Setting Sun on the Mythical Ireland website, which is at mythicalireland.com. So good. Now we can start the whole thing proper. And uh, it's 28 minutes. Wow. So this evening's uh, this, e this evening's discussion is uh, ostensibly about constellations in Irish mythology. I say ostensibly because there is a little bit of a difficulty in this. The difficulty is we don't have a source. We don't have an indigenous source that says, here's all the old Irish names for the constellations. Um, we have a lot of mythology, but what we don't have in our myths by and large, almost exclusively, actually, what we don't have is the myth plus the explanation of it. So if you're interested in um, uh, one of the very few exceptions to that, uh, read the section of Mythical Ireland, uh, the book, that is, Mythical Ireland, my book, Mythical Ireland, New Light on the Ancient Past, where in the last section of the book, I deal with um, the Milky Way. Now, we've done... Uh, at least one episode on the Milky Way, and we've mentioned it in plenty of episodes. But there was the story about Shkriv Klan Klan Ishna, the the track of the children of Ishnak, uh, and um, we we were talking about how there was a story about how uh, Deirdre and Nisha were buried in separate graves uh, after they died, and uh, a tree grew out of each grave. And the branches eventually um, mingled or entwined the twining branches, um, and the king had uh, had them. Uh, um, what's the word um, when you remove somebody from their grave? Oh, brain's working too fast now. But uh, yeah, 
they had them uh, buried again on opposite sides of a lake and the same thing happened again the trees grew out of the graves and the branches eventually met so that's the story but the explanation of the story was that that is how the Milky Way was formed, the twining branches, the two separate rivers, as it were, or trees of the Milky Way uh, mingling together in the heavens because the Milky Way is sort of split by this dark uh, rift, as we call it. Uh, and so uh, at the point of roughly where Cygnus is, exhumed, thank you, yes. <sighs> Finally exhumed that word from the bottom of my brain somewhere. Um uh, yes, so the twining branches was an explanation as to how uh, the uh, Laura Puente is in the house. Hello, Laura. Um, how the Milky Way was formed. Now, quite a lot of the rest of what you're going to hear tonight is what we might call <laughs> chance in your arm. <laughs> in Ireland, we would call it chance in your arm. No, um, informed speculation or good guesswork as i say we do not unfortunately now there that's not to say that there does not exist a manuscript somewhere in one of the monasteries or the universities probably one of the universities to be honest um most monasteries don't uh, keep um old valuable manuscripts these days there may be a manuscript somewhere that gives a treatise on Irish constellation names and myths. If there is, we don't have it. What we have is fragmentary information, and most of what we have is derived from, as I say, good guesswork, uh, speculation with regards to the constellations. So, for instance, uh, we have done a couple of episodes about Orion, and so um, probably won't cover too much of the old Orion uh, story given that it has had uh, you know we've 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 dealt with it to an extent uh, episode 62 and 63 of live Irish myths were about Orion in Irish mythology so why are we guessing well as I said that's why Mavanway is in the house hello Mavanway Giri from mid Wales bit late don't worry um, again, we're guessing because we don't have a tract in mythology that says, look, this is the story, and this is what it's about. Informed speculation leads us to um, postulate, for instance, that the constellation we know today as Cygnus, uh, the swan, was in fact also known to the ancient Irish as a swan-shaped uh, constellation. Um, now, uh, I think we've covered that too, I'm pretty sure, in uh, what we call the Cygnus Enigma, uh, episode 61, which was immediately before the Orion episodes, we spoke about the Cygnus Enigma and the fact that there are significant swan myths associated with, for instance, Newgrange, that Newgrange points to Fornox, that Fornox points to the place where the bright star Deneb, the brightest star of um, Cygnus, is rising in the Neolithic. And furthermore, that the passage and chamber of Newgrange are cross-shaped and uh, ostensibly Fornox is cross-shaped too with a sort of an egg-shaped chamber overlaid on top of it. Uh, we could speculate that, um, and I think it's quite healthy speculation, that uh, the builders of Newgrange perhaps were inspired by that constellation. So, for instance, uh, I want to talk to you about, very briefly, uh, some other constellations, because we've done a lot about Cygnus and we've done a lot about Orion. Less so are uh, other constellations. Uh, so, for instance, let's talk a moment about Taurus, the bull. Now, again, I would be inclined to think that Taurus is a constellation that is... Uh, was known as a constellation, was known as a, a bull or a, a similar grouping. There is lots of Irish mythology involving bulls. Of course, that doesn't mean that all of the myths about bulls relate to the stars. However, uh, one of the very valuable aspects of Island of the Setting Sun, and I hope you find it valuable, is that 
where we where we encounter uh, mythology that seems to suggest uh, 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 an explanation uh, relating to the stars, uh, we've done that. So, for instance, uh, I want to mention this. Uh, in Amergen's, in the Song of Amergen, when he arrived at the Boyne Estuary and he chanted his chant, one of the things that he asked was, who calls the kine, K-I-N-E, which is a sort of an antiquated word for cattle, who calls the cattle from Tethra's house and sees them dance in the bright heavens? A vital clue to the identity of the cattle and the location of Tethra's house, Maimel or Magmel, the pleasant plain, could be, we think, a region of the sky, and the cattle are indeed the cow and calf, or the moon and Venus. The cattle of Tethra is given as the stars rising out of the sea. There is a place in the landscape also with links to Maimel, uh, not far from the Boyne Estuary. Um, the fact that he sees the cattle dance in the sky is suggestive of movement. So we're inclined to think of the planets. Okay, that's the ca the cattle of Tethra. But then in relation to the bull, what is uh, again contained in Amrigan's chant, and sure, there's a million and one references to bulls in Irish mythology. Amrigan says, I am a strong bull. And uh, probably princip of principal importance with re relation to the constellation Taurus is the mention in the Dunchanicus myth about how doubt was formed. And we've mentioned this myth lots of times. That after there was a, a cattle famine uh, or a cattle disease, a disease upon the kine or the cattle of Ireland, that there was only one bull and seven cows left in Ireland. And we speculated that the one bull could refer to Taurus and the seven cows, perhaps referring to that little grouping of stars famously called the Seven Sisters, which also is known as the Pleiades uh, in the constellation of Taurus, mar marking uh, the shoulder of Taurus. Um, and there's quite a lot of mythology about bulls fighting and sometimes cows fighting with bulls. So, for instance, at Millmount, uh, there was a myth again mentioned in Island of the, Se of the Setting Sun. Um, I should read this actually. I think if I can find it, do I do apologize that I need to find it? I need to look for it first. I know what chapter it's in, I'm just not entirely sure that I can find it very quickly. Uh, there is an old story about uh, Millmount. Yes. The story recounted how Boan, and she's the goddess, of course, the deity who gives her name to the Boyne River, the illuminated cow lived beside Millmount and had a white bull that was her protector. One time the white bull, while grazing upriver, went slightly out of sight over the brow of the hill when a black bull came in from the sea and made to attack Boan, or Boan. There are variant spellings of her name. In Ireland, we went with Boan, B-O-F-A-N-N. -N, and of course, in Dinshanicus, she is spelled Boan, B-O-F-A-N-D. The white bull came in, uh, sorry, the white bull came back in time, and a, f a fight ensued with the white bull driving the black bull back into the sea. The tale bears similarities to the time in which the brown bull, Don Cúlne, and the white bull, Finn Benach, battle to the death, although in the town it is the white bull that is killed. Uh, and of course, we were looking out towards an area of town known as Black Bull in Drogheda. Uh, and we thought that perhaps there was an astronomical reference there. Why would Taurus be important in prehistory? Uh, I think part of the reason for it is because in the earlier part of the Neolithic, around about the time the first monuments began to be constructed in Ireland, in fact, uh, Taurus marked the vernal point uh, of the sun. The sun's spring equinox location was housed in Taurus. And also uh, the autumn full moons were housed in Taurus. And uh, this is the constellation uh, that is likely to have housed uh, the sun uh, when it was rising and shining into the chamber of Cairn T and other such equinoctially aligned ancient chambers. 
But as I said, there's a proliferation of bull mythology. What we cannot say, unfortunately, and I haven't found it yet, and as I say, perhaps that opportunity will come in the future, I cannot say that this story it relates to Taurus. I can suggest it. I can speculate that that is the case, but I can't give you the documentary evidence that says that's definitely the case. With regard to uh, the zodiac uh, or the ecliptic, that zone through which the sun and the moon and the planets pass through, there are some different um, um, words, phrases in Irish for that, uh, which I think are important. And here's one of them. The Irish word for zodiac or phrase is cross na marvel, meaning the cross or crossroads of confusion or wandering. Does this describe the wandering, the apparent confusion of the nomadic planets as they venture along the ecliptic? It is a remarkable description, especially given the apparent dance of the planets, many of which perform perceptible loops in the sky watched against the background stars. All of the so-called exterior planets, i.e. those outside the orbit of the Earth, perform this movement, known to astronomers as a retrograde loop. Another Irish word for zodiac is urkrush, which could mean an hour belt or a turning circle. The idea of the zodiac relating to time and a slowly turning circle brings to mind many notions, including that the constellations of the zodiac were used to track the movements of the sun, moon and planets and therefore to measure time. But greater than that is the suggestion implied by the translation turning circle that the belt of the zodiac was slowly revolving as a result of the precession of the equinoxes, something only manifestly perceptible over huge periods of time. And of course, we're not really going to deal with the heaviness of uh, uh, the precession of the equinoxes tonight. Anyway, that's from Island of the Setting Sun. And that is actually the 2020 edition I was reading from. Um, so hopefully you will get your yours. So I wanted to mention uh, there's a fascinating document in uh, the the library of Basel, Basel in Switzerland. It's an inscription associated with Aquarius, but the document pertains to the Irish Zodiac. Uh, and I think it was Peter Beresford Ellis who wrote a little or wrote a paper about this. And you may be able to find something about that on the internet. But I wanted to turn our attention for a moment to the constellation Aquarius, which you might think very rarely gets a mention. And I think that might be one of, uh, that might be its first mention in um, Live Irish Myths. So a couple of things about Aquarius that are interesting. Beside the male figure, and remember that uh, certain classic classical depictions of Aquarius are a male holding a pail of water or a bucket or some sort of a jug of water, often tipping it out, sometimes two buckets of water, Sometimes it's a donkey or an ass that has the pails of water. And sometimes there's a pail of water being tipped out with no human or animal associated with it. There's an inscription associated with Aquarius on this Irish zodiac in the Library of Basel in Switzerland. Beside the male figure are the words leprosus lunaris, which mean literally the lunar leper as in somebody suffering from leprosy. This description immediately brings to mind the extraordinary tale of the drowning of Boan, first encountered in chapter one, in which we are told that the lunar deity was deformed by the rising waters of Nechton's well, losing an eye and being sadly mutilated before being washed along the new formed boy into the sea at Rockabill. This tale has strong links to the winter solstice, at which time in the Neolithic, the sun was housed in Aquarius, or whatever name the constellation had in Irish or in the language of that time. The waning last crescent at the time of winter solstice signalled that the disappearing moon was about to vanish, joining the sun in Aquarius. The Basil Zodiac shows Aquarius equipped with a nondescript object, presumably a water sprinkler. Is this article akin to the pail which the hag put under the magic cow in Irish folklore. And when she did, by the way, the cow's milk was uh, 
sieved into millions of droplets. There are strong lunar connotations associated with Aquarius because at the time of the Neolithic, a full moon shining into Newgrange would be housed in this constellation. Dechtene, the mother of Cúchulainn, has a strong connection with the constellation Aquarius. Well, this is our speculation, okay? One translation of her name could be the 10th chain link based on Jech, Jech or Jech, the Irish word for ten and tine, a word which means chain or link, and it also means fire. The 10th link in the chain of the zodiac. If Taurus is assumed to be the first in the Neolithic period, is Aquarius. So there is some speculation. Can we say Aquarius was definitely known as a water-carrying constellation in pre-Christian Ireland? No, we can't. Definitely not. What was also interesting, too, further to that, was that, uh, as I said, Aquarius was often represented, uh, and I'm reading here from, if you haven't got this and you're interested in old uh, lore and mythology and stories about stars, you cannot be without star names, their lore and meaning by Richard Hinckley Allen. Now, Allen's work is old. Uh, it was published in, uh, first published in 1899 and uh, published um, with uh, uh, his own, an unabridged, corrected republication of the work um, in 1963 by Dover Publications. Now, I've read in places that... Um, some of it is inaccurate, some of it has been updated and all the rest. But by and large, it gives you a sweeping introduction uh, to how the constellations were known in various traditions. Of course, we know that the modern constellation names uh, come from classical mythology. There is a lot of Arabic uh, names and myths. Um, you know, uh, there are then constellations which are uh, sort of Edwardian, Victorian era some of them are instruments like telescopium, triangulum, uh, hor horologium, the, the, the watch or the clock. But then there are those that are um, much, much older. And when you see the patterns, patterns, excuse the pun, uh, you'll see that in different parts of the world, sometimes, yes, a constellation was seen as different things. And of course, the Chinese had very different constellations. And if you want to have a look at their constellations, you download Stellarium uh, and you can see the Chinese constellations. And of course, the Native American Indians, the Lakota in particular, had a very, very different star. Now, they looked at the same stars as we do today. But for instance, they did not see the Orion that we see today as, as seven bright stars and others around it. They did not see that as one distinct constellation grouping. They used part of that as a, a larger grouping. So it's always interesting to compare uh, with uh, what others uh, perceived. However, by and large throughout the world, Orion is a, a man or a warrior or a hunter or a deity. By and large through, throughout the world, Taurus is a bull. Uh, or some sort of a beast. Aquarius, I had this thought, and it's just a mad sort of, uh, it's just one of those speculative thoughts, that the fact that there were two water barrel barrels, or, for instance, Al-Biruni had it in his astrological charts as an amphora, uh, which is a two-handled wine jar. Uh, and I wonder, is that related to something that we call a mether, a drinking cup, which has several handles? The idea being, of course, absolutely pre-COVID-19, the idea being that it was a cup that could be shared between people. So, for instance, we have a story pertaining to Newgrange called Altrum Chiagavathar, which is the fosterage of the house of the two drinking vessels or the two methers. And I just wonder now, and it's something I have to go back to and read again with this in mind. Is there a significance to the possibility that uh, Aquarius might have been seen as a constellation with methers, uh, two methers, um, given the links that Alan has discussed here, especially when you consider that Aquarius was the constellation in which the sun was located when the sun was shining into Newgrange at winter solstice back in the Neolithic. So that's something I have to go and do more research on.
the ancient Peruvians looked at the shape of the black spaces and voids in the sky as constellations instead of the stars, says Desiree. Yes, absolutely right. Adele Perth is sneaking in very late. Don't, don't apologize, but I know it's very early where you are, Adele. Good morning to you. Um, always a seat for you in the house, indeed. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, because time is dragging on a little bit, let's discuss some other possibilities, right? Uh, and perhaps you can prompt me with some constellations. And if there is some connection there to be explored, we'll explore it. I'm very interested in Mata, the story of the great monster that was dismembered at uh, Sheed and Broga at Newgrange. Uh, in, in some stories, in, in, in the wooing of Emer, Tuchmark Emre, uh, it is said that the Dagda is the one who killed the sea monster uh, in Murhevna, the plain covered by the sea uh, and the water drained from it. Uh, in Denshanachus, it is said that the Ulstermen, or more generally, all, you know, the Irish, the men of Ireland, uh, dismembered the monster and tossed it into the River Boyne. Now, there's two possibilities with Matha in terms of constellations, if you think about similar constellations. One is Draco the Dragon, which is this beastly constellation that wraps itself around the pole of the sky. Why would that be significant? It would possibly be significant because in the late Neolithic, now this will be after Newgrange was built, of course, several centuries, the brightest star of the constellation Draco, and Draco isn't a... <laughs> Oh, pardon me, isn't a particularly bright constellation. Uh, the bright star that we call Thuban, Alpha Draconis, was the pole star. So, in fact, it could be said that Draco, whatever it was seen as by pre-Christian Irish astronomers, uh, was a constellation that pivoted on this turning point. Don't forget uh, that I, I mentioned in my book, Newgrange Monument Immortality, that... Uh, uh, and this is from the work of Charles Valancy talking to um, talking to uh, uh, peasants that uh, one of the words for the, the pole star, this is on page 87 of Newgrange Monument Immortality. I don't know if you can see that uh, time lapse of the stars uh, and the one in the center is not moving. Uh, the Irish referred to the pole star as Miaha, which which means basically that which does not turn, which is fascinating. So there was a, a bright star in Draco uh, around which the entire sky appeared to pivot. <clears throat> and and if we thought that, and I've speculated on this in my Mythical Ireland book, that if you thought of uh, the stone that used to stand on the top of Newgrange, which is sadly lost, it was removed in the past couple of centuries, um, as a sort of an axis mundi, a world axis. Perhaps, you know, there was a cosmology that saw uh, the pivot happening in the sky, but also they saw the monument of Newgrange as something upon which everything was seen to pivot, including this beast, which was killed on the Lech Ben. So very specifically uh, killed on that stone, which I always thought was odd. How could you kill a monster on a stone? Um, it's not it's not really that vague, but then Denchanicus admittedly is a medieval collection of place name myths, and we don't know how far back any of that goes. Again, speculative. Really speculative. Uh, we don't have the manual that says the other possibility for Mata, which I'm less inclined to go with, is the constellation we know as Hydra. And of course, Hydra was the great uh, multi, was it four or five headed snake? Uh, was defeated by Hercules or Heracles. I think I'm right about that. Um, the reason that there's a possibility there is because Hydra was multi-headed and in one of the descriptions of Mata in Denshanicus, we have the description of Mata as being a four-headed, 100-legged monster. Or sorry, uh, it had seven score legs and four heads. So whatever seven scores, 140, isn't it? And four heads, the fact that it was multi-headed. But then I shift my attention back to Draco again. The head of the dragon is a sort of an asterism of stars, a trapezium. It's a little bit sort of like a squashed diamond shape. Um, what, what we might call a lozenge from the, uh, the megalithic art, you know, this lozenge, lozenge shape. And it is located close to the constellation of... Lyra. In fact, if you look in the, the sky, 
Um, as I'm going to do as I'm talking to you to make sure that uh, so if you have something like Stellarium open in front of you, you'll see that a dragon's head is not too far above Lyra and the bright star Vega. And so one of the things that Richard Moore and I speculated in our work around the Cygnus Enigma was the fact that in the myth of uh, Ashlinga Engeso, uh, Engus, Engus is brought to the place where Bov Jarag has found Kerr, this mysterious maiden, swan maiden, who we fell in love with. And it turns out that she's a changeling. She's a swan one year and a human woman the next. And uh, the place that he takes him to is the Lake of the Dragon's Mouth. And we wondered whether that wasn't to do with the fact that Cygnus uh, sits astride the uh, constellation or the head of Dr Draco in the sky, as does Lyra the harp. And then we thought about Lyra being a harp, per perhaps being Uthna, or the Dagda's harp, uh, the one that is mentioned uh, after the Battle of Moitura, uh, the Fomorians steal the harp of Dagda. And Dagda and Ogma, and is it uh, Dagda, Ogma and Lu, or Dagda, Ogma and Mananon uh, go and rescue it? Of course, this is very, very important because you know that, uh, well, you know, we're getting into Jungian psychology here, but the view that uh, 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 music and the creative arts are the foundation upon which uh, ordered uh, and uh, successful civilizations are built. Uh, and stealing the harp was a very provocative act on behalf of the evil Fomorians. Uh, but of course, uh, it was taken back again. Somebody mentioned Cassiopeia. Donna Firer says, any thoughts about Cassiopeia? I do because one of the interesting things about Cassiopeia is it's a little bit like Cygnus in this regard. It is one of the very, very few constellations of the sky that is apparently entirely immersed in uh, the river of the Milky Way. So if you look at the Milky Way, you look that there are constellations either side of it and some of them straddling it uh, part in and part out. Cygnus very nicely appears to fly down along the heavenly river uh, as if you know coming into land on uh, on the water of the river. Uh, Cassiopeia is another one uh, that appears to be a constellation, as I say, quite well embedded in the river. I wouldn't have thought much about it until I read in Charles Squire's book about it, and it's a brief mention, but it may give us a hint. So if you give me a second, I will go and retrieve Squire. Uh, yes. And I'll just try and find that very quickly for you and tell you what Squire said about Cassiopeia, which may give us a little bit of an insight. And I said, these are the scraps. These are the snippets of information. And I consider it uh, to be lost information in, in, in many respects. Information that has been washed away with time uh, and has disappeared as people have disappeared. Uh, I wonder how much of this, by the way, Star-Lord disappeared at the time of the Great Famine when people emigrated. That story about the the, the, the track of the children of Ishnach uh, resurfaced in Nova Scotia and other places. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Oh, Cassiopeia's chair, 252. The British gods are sometimes described as divided into three families. And these are specifically British, but we can think of these as part of the Celtic pantheon. The children of Dun, the children of Nud, and the children of Lear. But these three families are really only two for Nud or Lud, Chud, L L U D D, as he is variously called, is himself described as a son of Beli, who was the husband of the goddess Dun. There can be no doubt that Dun herself is the same divine personage as Danu, the mother of the Tua de Danun, and that Beli is the, that's B E L I, is the British equivalent of the Gaelic Bile. B I L E Father, the universal dispatter who sent out the first gales from Hades to take possession of Ireland. With the other family, the children of Lear, we are equally on fam familiar ground, for the British Lear L L Y R can be none other than the Gaelic sea god Lear. 
These two families or tribes are usually regarded as in opposition, and their struggles seem to symbolize in British myth that that same conflict between the powers of heaven, light and life, and of the sea, darkness and death, which are shadowed in Gaelic mythology in the battles between the Tuatha de Danann and the Fomors. For the children of Dun were certainly gods of the sky. Their names are writ large in the heavens. The glittering W, which we call Cassiopeia's chair, was to our British ancestors, Clis Dun, L-L-Y-S-D-O-N, or Dun's court. Our northern crown was Caer Arianrod, the castle of Arianrod, Dun's daughter, while the Milky Way was the castle of Gwydion, Dun's son. And so very specifically here, we're being told, and that's Welsh, obviously, we're being told uh, that Dunn's court was Cassiopeia's chair. So perhaps uh, we could suggest uh, that Danu uh, is slash possibly associated with the constellation um, uh, Cassiopeia. Okay, where else are we going with this? Um, first of all, make sure I'm not, there's a lot of comments I know. I'm just trying to see if there's anybody has uh, constellation suggestions. Ophiuchus uh, has been lost, has it not, says Neil Hughes. Ophiuchus, I think, is important. Ophiuchus is the serpent bearer. And here's a significant story about Ophiuchus. We tied him in with our exploration of the high man in Island of the Setting Sun, Richard and I. Ophiuchus is interesting because he's a little bit like Orion in this regard. I'm just trying to find Stellarium here to open it up again so that I can look at it while I'm talking about it. Ophiuchus is a little bit like Orion in this regard, in that he is he quite often identified as a male figure, okay? He's the one who's grappling with the serpent. A third possibility for for Martha, I know. <laughs> Let's not. Oh, dear, Anthony, you're complicating it too much. If you look at Orion and you look at Ophiuchus, there's two, there's, a, there's, a, there's something that's very important about both of them. And that is that in its course through the heavens, the sun passes above Orion. Between the horns of Taurus and the feet of Gemini, uh, the sun kind of passes above the hand of Orion. And as I said, on the summer solstice, now, it can be seen that Orion carries the torch, the blazing torch of the sky uh, from east to west. In effect, what we've said is you could nearly describe Orion as a 13th constellation of the Zodiac because there is a moment for a few days where when the moon and the planets and the sun are passing between uh, Taurus and Gemini, uh, that they're actually, to all intents and purposes, located in Orion or above Orion. Ophiuchus is a little bit the same. He is guarding the ford. By the way, sorry, I forgot to say, Orion guards the ford like Cúchulainn does. Uh, he's guarding the ford, the crossing point of the river, where the sun and the moon and the planets go across the Milky Way, the Sky River, Balach na Bófinna, the Way of the White Cow, and the River Boyne is Awan Bófinna. The Boyne and the Milky Way are seen as earthly and uh, uh, and uh, and um, heavenly reflections of each other. Ophiuchus, rather than having the river going over his head, he's actually standing in the river. One of his legs is seen to stand in the river. And so when the sun is passing between the constellations of Scorpius and Sagittarius, Scorpius being the scorpion, Sagittarius being the archer, uh, and again, not sure that there are equivalents in Irish mythology, uh, but there have to be, of course, somewhere. Uh, for a moment, the sun is actually passing across the leg of Ophiuchus. So you have Orion and Ophiuchus in direct opposition to each other. They are both uh, largely identified uh, as male uh, uh, characters. One is the hunter or the warrior preparing to tackle the bull who's charging at him. The other has the, the serpent wrapped around his waist. And of course, the serpent is divided into two constellations on either side of Ophiuchus. Serpens caput, the, the head of the snake, and serpens cauda, the snail, or the tail of the snake, the snail of the tail, <laughs> the tail of the snake. We speculated that it was possible that Ophiuchus uh, inspired uh, St. Patrick's mythology for the reason 
that Patrick, of course, is said to have come from the east and gone to the west along this very long alignment that we discussed in Ireland of the Setting Sun, the, the Patrick, the, uh, the, what did we call it, Patrick's Equinox journey, that he lands at the Boyne Estuary, incidentally, at the same place Amergin had done in the Bronze Age, and he travelled to the Hill of Slain to light the Paschal Fire, and that the journey there, which announced the flame of Christianity into Ireland, and the journey from there to Croke Patrick in the West is an equinox journey, and of course the places are very uh, neatly uh, lined up on this long-distance alignment. Uh, we suggested that it was possible that uh, St. Patrick was seen to come from the East as Orion, as a sort of a spiritual warrior, uh, but to descend in the West on the peak of of uh, Crow Patrick uh, on, a, on a precise alignment from the Hill of Slain, uh, uh, grappling with the serpents. And of course, the story that we all know from our childhood about St. Patrick is that he banished the snakes from Ireland. Experts and historians and uh, 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 naturalists will tell you there were never were any snakes in Ireland for him to banish, but that didn't prevent the story uh, from persisting. Some people say it was merely uh, the Christian, Christian Christianization of an older myth involving one of the deities uh, battling with one of these great serpents, the Ulfest, which which could be the the water hydra, the water snake, and uh, the Ulfest, which is often seen as a sort of a giant snake-like creature in waters and in lakes in Ireland. Patrick was said to have grappled for 40 days and nights. In some versions of the tale, he grappled, grappled with demon birds. But of course, there's a story about Loch Cara, uh, which is in that part of the world. I think it's in County Mayo. Uh, perhaps the Mayoians uh, might correct me on that. I know I stayed there when I was a child and got a fantastic view of the stars. The creation myth of Loch Cara is that Patrick at uh, through the the demon serpent or beast from Croke Patrick into the lake of Loch Cara, and that the beast was called Cora, C O R R A, and that's where Loch Cara uh, got its name from. Um, and what I like to think about those stories is, if you hear a story about, for instance, Finn McCool threw a stone from here to here, then you should be examining, is there a link there? Is that an equinoctial or a spe especially a solstice alignment? Or is it perhaps an alignment connected with constellations? And so what we were looking for was constellations. And it was just an idea that perhaps Ophiuchus was Patrick grappling with the snakes. Back a little bit. Uh, so just move a little bit east in the sky, uh, east of Ophiuchus, and you have Aquila the eagle. Now the eagle, uh, I don't think is mentioned too often in Irish mythology. We have uh, Fintan MacBochra, who, in order to escape uh, the great flood, um, uh, he comes here with Kezair and uh, uh, the 50 women and the other two men, and is the only survivor, the sole survivor. Uh, and he uh, survives in a cave at the top of Tultinje, or Tultinje, uh, overlooking the uh, River Shannon in Tipperary, uh, by transforming first into a salmon and then a hawk and then an eagle. But I was more thinking that perhaps Altair, uh, the bright star of uh, Aquila the eagle, uh, that though that constellation being so close to the sky to Cygnus and also sort of appearing to fly along the Milky Way could perhaps resemble Angus and Care, that one of the birds was Angus and one was Care, that perhaps they were seen as two swans, because don't forget, in the midst, there's a very specific reference to pairs of swans that are linked with silver chains. The story about how Dechtene came to Newgrange, and we spoke about that because there's incest in that myth. And we spoke about that in our episode about the myths pertaining to incest connected with Newgrange, that Deirdre and Crohor uh, either her father or her brother, depending on which version of the story you read, uh, were chasing swans from Awan Macha when they came to Newgrange. But there's a reference to the swans being linked by silver chains. We wondered whether this is the silver chain of the Milky Way that appears to link uh, the two constellations. Somebody asked me recently, and please forgive me because I can't remember who it was, and please forgive me if I did not reply to your email or your message. Uh, I did intend to, I just didn't get a time to. Somebody asked me if there was an equivalent to Pegasus in Irish myth, a uh, winged horse. I'm not entirely sure that, I can't say that there definitely isn't. I'm not familiar with one. But I thought about 
the possibility that there is lots of horse mythology, and the horse is extremely important, of course, to certain kingship rights in medieval Ireland. I wouldn't at all be surprised if there was some sort of a link along there. Pisces, uh, the fishes, um, again, were just on the realm of speculation here it is entirely possible that if we went back to neolithic ireland in a time machine and we hopped out and we could speak the language of the people of the time we could chat with our ancestors in the boyne valley and say to them although we're not likely to be ancestors because the dna shows they were diverse from the modern population of ireland but anyway let's just call them ancestors and we were to hop out and we were able to speak their language and say listen show us your constellations we might find out uh, that everything was different and that uh, all of this speculation is misplaced uh, and misleading. Who knows? Uh, very difficult to know. When I look at Pisces and the fish, of course, I think about the salmon of knowledge. And I think about if you wanted uh, to immortalize a fish, then how better than uh, one of the primary uh, constellations of the zodiac? What we're missing there, though, is the fact that the salmon of knowledge is in intimately connected with uh, the Boyne River uh, and, of course, the Well of Segish or the Well of Necton, uh, where it, uh, it grew up uh, before it was caught in the Boyne River uh, much later on. Uh, and so if we thought that the, the Milky Way was the Boyne, uh, well, Pisces is a little bit removed uh, from the Milky Way, so hard to tell. Let's talk a, a little bit of a moment for a moment about that document in the University uh, of Basel uh, and just go through the names for the Zodiac. And of course, most of these are probably borrowed uh, from the classical terminology. So Aries is Reha, meaning a ram. Taurus is Tarv, meaning a bull. Gemini is marked as Castor and Pollux. Yes, they are the, the twins of Gemini. That's one we need to get back to. Cancer is called Porton, which basically means crab. Leo, I was fascinated with because Leo is one that sticks out rather than being called a lion. Leo in the Irish zodiac was called Coo, C U Fada, which means Mananon had a special horse that could cross both land and water, says Mavanwe. Very, very astutely uh, pointed out, Mavanwe. Um, Mananon's steed. I'm just taking a note here of that. Thank you for that. Very interesting. Uh, Leo is coo, which means hound. Uh, and so Richard and I investigated or speculated again uh, on a story in the time. Of course, uh, well, in the story of the Ulster cycle that I'm hoping you're all familiar with, which is the story of how Setanta killed the hound. And we speculate that Setanta later became Cúchulainn, is actually Orion, and that he's throwing the moon along the ecliptic and that it enters the mouth uh, of the coo, the hound, and out through its entrails. And that is how uh, the great hound of Cullen was killed. And that's how Setanta became Cúchulainn, that that's actually a star story relating to the sky. Virgo is called Oigvan. Now, Oigvan is a is a, um, a composite word. It's made of two words, Og and Van, which basically means young woman, which is a polite way of saying a virgin. So perhaps nothing unusual there, except for, don't forget, uh, Angus was known as Angus Mock on Og, uh, which uh, scholars have of, often said is not grammatically correct. Uh, son of the young. Uh, it doesn't even sound right. Uh, but uh, we, we again in Ireland of the Setting Sun speculated that in fact he was son of the Virgin uh, and that was pertaining to uh, the fact that his mother uh, conceived him uh, by miraculous means when the Dagda sent uh, 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 Bowen's husband Elkmar away on a journey and made time stand still and that the child was actually born in one day. Libra is called Scali, which basically means the scales. Scorpio is called Scorpion. So no no uh, 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 no surprises there. Sagittarius is called Leach Kaiha Syed, which basically means the hero uh, who throws the arrows or who fires the arrows. Uh, so again, same thing. Capricorn means 
is Pukon, meaning the goat. Aquarius is on Tushkador, the water carrier. And Pisces is Da Iask, two fish. So in Irish, you called Pisces, uh, well, this is probably in the Middle Ages, you called Pisces two fish. Da Iask, and that's what it means, uh, two fish. So that is the zodiac as it was contained uh, on uh, 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 um, the uh, uh, document or the uh, manuscript in the University of Basel. The plough is interesting too because the plough, of course, uh, is a rather late invention. Uh, we don't know in Ireland, I don't think we know in the archaeological record when the first plough actually appears. But what's interesting about the two of the Danon is, of course, their last three kings, uh, who are the kings in power when the Milesians arrive, are Macul, Machecht, and Magrania. Macul being the son of the hazel. Of course, we talked about the importance of the kno or the hazelnut, uh, which is, has so much symbolism and so much importance. Of course, it's nutritious. It feeds the salmon of knowledge. It, it, it is related to the heart. It looks like a heart. When the shell cracks open, it, it, it becomes a thing that is rooted in all of the worlds. The world of the sky, uh, because the tree grows upwards. The world of the earth or the underworld, because the roots grow downwards. And, of course, the telluric or uh, surface world, uh, because that is where uh, the nut has rested and its, uh, its husk has been uh, um, split open. Makecht, son of the plough. August Magrania, son of the sun. So son of the hazel, son of the plough, son of the sun. The sun, of course, makes everything grow and it's important and absolutely vital, which is why we can identify deities with the sun. Dagda, for instance, uh, Dagda Roth being uh, uh, an old reference to this, the, the sun. And that's again from Valency and Newgrange Monument Immortality. Uh, Dagda being red eyed uh, and uh, having solar attributes, being the one who made all the water dry up from uh, Morhevna, the plain that had covered the area, uh, including the great monuments at Newgrange. And one wonders whether the plough uh, doesn't have some sort of a pre-Christian, perhaps prehistoric origin uh, in, in Ireland as well. Given that there's a reference uh, to a plough, uh, son of the plough in, in, in our mythology. Robin Edgar says, the great hound myth sounds very much like an eclipse myth. The Norse imagined two wolves were responsible for solar and lunar eclipses. In the Norse sky await two wolves, Skull, the one who mocks, and Hattie, the one who hates. These wolves live for the chasing and the hunting of two very important celestial beings, the sun and the moon. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, and I, I wonder whether also it might refer to an eclipse that might have happened um, in the constellation of um, um, Ku, the hound. Barbara says, I see a problem here. The earliest record of constellations you were talking about is by Claudius Ptolemy in the second century CE, which is a couple of centuries after these tombs. Doesn't make sense. The stars, yes. The animals, no. Am I alone? Well, we have a great problem, Barbara, in terms of when anything was written down. And of course, this pertains to the whole discussion uh, and the controversial discussion and debate around the origin of Irish mythology and the true genesis and the true age of it. Because the first myths weren't actually written down till the Middle Ages in, in, med in the medieval period, uh, when in fact uh, some of them appear to describe events pertaining to monuments that are, first of all, very, very ancient, prehistoric, pre-Christian, uh, but are also said to have been shut up over time uh, where such events couldn't be described by anybody in the medieval period unless the myth had come down from that time we're in exactly the same quandary uh, with the constellations i would say that uh, don't be over reliant on uh, the experts telling you that constellations come from one source uh, because what we're not accounting for here is the oral uh, and that of course, is uh, by and large lost in the mists of time. Yes, but by the time something comes to be written down, I mean, how old is it? How old 
uh, are the stories that were written down in the 12th and 13th and 14th century in the monasteries of Ireland. Uh, some experts would have us believe that they're medieval stories, that they were concocted by the monks based on uh, biblical tales and based on uh, mythic epics that they had encountered on their uh, travels in Europe, uh, when in fact it is highly likely that what it is is a synthesis of uh, uh, indigenous, much older mythology uh, combined with uh, those uh, biblical overtones. And I think we can look upon the constellations in the same way. Um, in fact, look, it has been suggested, and I'd be inclined to go with this, that a Taurus was depicted uh, uh, as a, a bull with a, a series of little dots on his shoulder in the Lascaux cave paintings in France. Now, uh, unless I'm uh, mistaken, I'm going to quickly Google. Um, I think there are, are they 30, 40,000 BC, I mean, Paleolithic, or are they older than that again? Um, of course, always the first result um, when you uh, search for these things, uh, quite a lot, the first result is Wikipedia. Not always entirely reliable. Uh, in fact, some people would say not reliable. Oh, sorry, okay. The art is dated to a circa 17,000 to 1,500 uh, before common era BCE um, so yeah you're still talking about perhaps 19,000 years ago apparently humans were depicting Taurus as a bull with these dots on his shoulders uh, of course it's a subjective area how do we know it doesn't have the word Taurus written beside it, it doesn't tell us that this is definitely uh, you know in, in, the, in, in, in the sky now I'm just going to make sure I'm not missing anything else Loch Cara, says Margaret, a Ballon robe would be in close distance to Moitura Kong. The first battle of Moitura, of course, was at Moitura Kong. Oh, somebody, Catherine Woodruff is also, also mentioning the cave paintings in France. See you, Fada. Cool. Yeah, okay. Um, let's just have a quick sweep around the sky and just make sure that we're not missing anything else that's really important. The dogs, the dogs. Well, for instance, Bran and Skjolan, the dogs of uh, uh, Finn McCool. Um, there are two townlands in County Louth, uh, very close to the border of Meath, Rathbran Moor and Rathbran Beg. And it made me think of the, the large and the small dog, and the dogs eternally accompany Orion across the sky. There are his faithful hounds. Sirius the dog star was shining into New Grange when it was built. That is an astronomical fact. After a while, due to procession of the equinoxes and Sirius's own proper motion, it no longer shone into the chamber of New Grange. And I found a reference in the Dinchanicus that said Ethna, another name for Bowen, by the way, came to Newgrange in the guise of a dog. And I speculated that perhaps that was a reference to the fact that the dog star shone in there in uh, the Neolithic. In Island of the Setting Sun, uh, which was first published, remember, in uh, 2006, Richard and I speculated that the fact that there were three dog skeletons found in the chamber of Newgrange was perhaps significant to this fact. At the time, we did not know because it would only be revealed later. Uh, Professor O'Kelly believed that the skeletons were of recent dogs that were recent uh, arrivals into the chamber, that perhaps they had found their way in through the roof box at some point, squeezed in through a gap and couldn't get out again and had died in there. Uh, but in fact, at some point in the past five or ten years, uh, a study was done on those bones and found that they were more than 4,000, I think they were more than 4,500 years old. Uh, I think they were uh, possibly late Neolithic. And then there's the fact that there's a, 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 a hill of Railtog where the sun sets on winter solstice viewed from Newgrange and also where Sirius would have set uh, in the Neolithic. Uh, and there was a story about a ring fort up there that said uh, there was gold hidden beneath the wrath and that it was guarded by a dog. 
And William Battersby, the late William Battersby, who was a local historian and writer uh, from Kells in County Meath, suggested an, associated, an association between the gold of the story and the sun, even though the, the, the metal gold was not known in the age of Newgrange. The idea suggested by the legend is that the golden sun sets behind Railtog Wrath and that at night time, during certain periods of the year, Sirius the Dog Star would set in the same place and thus the dog guards the gold. It's all tenuous. I know that. Of course it is. It's tenuous and in a lot of cases speculative. Uh, until we find that document that perhaps, as I say, is buried. That unexplored, untranslated manuscript that's buried somewhere that says, do you see this story that we told you, the Children of Lear? That does relate to the constellation Cygnus. You know, that constellation was seen as a swan in, in, in ancient Ireland. Um, I'm just having a look through the constellations here. Uh, Bootes, the herdsman, and its bright star Arcturus. Uh, that's an interesting one. Um, there's a shepherd of Elkmar that's mentioned in the Dunchenicus in relation to Douth, and uh, I wondered whether the shepherd could be considered like a herdsman, you know, as sort of along the same idea. Not sure. Hercules, uh, one of the great, uh, one of the greatest uh, heroes of classical mythology has what could be called a reasonably sort of obscure constellation, not nearly containing as many bright stars as the likes of Orion, etc., etc. Who could he be? Uh, could Hercules be uh, one of those great heroes like uh, 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 Finn or Oshin of the... Uh, pardon me, the Finn cycle? Could he be Lou? Could he be uh, Ogma? Could he be... Uh, man and on, who, who knows? A um, whole load of other constellations uh, that definitely aren't uh, relevant to our discussion, especially those that refer to uh, modern um, uh, measuring instruments. They're modern constellations. Set us the whale. Again, couldn't tell you if there's an equivalent uh, in Irish mythology. Uh, Aries, not sure. Uh, whether we have an Aries. I'm interested in Origa, the charioteer, because, of course, the very famous charioteer is Leig, who is Cúchulainn's charioteer in the Ulster Cycle in Tóin Bó Cúlnia. Uh, and uh, Leig uh, sort of being attached, in a way, almost. He's attached to Taurus, but he's directly above Orion, associated in the same area of the sky, also with the Milky Way running through it. Then immediately to the west of Orion and to the west of the Milky Way, standing with their feet in the river is uh, uh, Gemini, uh, Castor and Pollux. And the twins are mentioned in mythology. Don't forget Macha, uh, as in Awan Macha, uh, has, uh, uh, doesn't she have to race a horse, even though she's heavily pregnant with twins and she gives birth to them uh, as soon as she wins the race. And there's also a mention to an Owen Plain here on the East Coast, which is between the twin rivers, I think, of the Delvin and the Nanny. And that area was called Owen. And I speculated again, I've just mentioned it briefly in Island of the Setting Sun, the possibility that if there is uh, twin mythology, that perhaps it related to the time uh, when the vernal point was in the constellation of uh, Gemini, uh, the twins, uh, and that the reason we have a proliferation of bull mythology is because a lot of the uh, mythology around bulls emanates originally from the time of the Neolithic when the sun was housed there on the vernal equinox. And again, all, all speculative. Can we prove any of this? No, we can't. Um, in fact, I'm trying to think if there's any single direct reference to a constellation in the Irish manuscripts other than Orion, which is very definitively referred to uh, by the uh, the pre-famine peasantry of the south of Ireland as Kimui, the armed king. And of course, that brings to mind Nuadu and his silver arm, uh, again, as discussed in uh, Island of the Setting Sun uh, as a possible rendition of Orion with his silvery arm being that part of his arm that is embedded in the silvery uh, Milky Way River, uh, which runs uh, through part of the constellation. Are we missing anything else? Is there anything else that's immediately obvious that we didn't discuss even briefly? Uh, Libra, I'm not sure about Virgo. Again, not sure about beyond the possibility that there's a connection there. 
uh, with uh, Newgrange. Uh, on the back of the constellation of Hydra, the water snake, are two constellations called Corvus the Crow and Crater the Cup. Uh, but again, examining the mythology of them, it seems um, it would be very tenuous, at least, to suggest uh, any connection. Don't forget there's Lynx, that faint constellation of the northern hemisphere of the sky. Uh, Camelopardus, or is it Camelopardalis? Camelo, I'll tell you now. I'll get the constellation names up. Yes, Camelopardalis, which is the giraffe. Don't think that would have been significant to pre-Christian Irish uh, observers. But again, I couldn't be sure. Uh, and one other uh, that could be related again to a, a deity somewhere along the line is Cepheus, uh, the King Cepheus that is represented uh, by a constellation very close to uh, Cassiopeia of the northern hemisphere of the sky. And then you have a whole load of other smaller constellations, such as, for instance, Lacerta, the lizard, Vulpecula, the fox, a Shunnock, that could be an Irish one. Uh, is the fox mentioned in many myths? Not really. Uh, I think the pig is missing because that's a significant creature in Irish mythology. Uh, other small const constellations, Aquilus, the foal, uh, Sagitta, the arrow, Triangulum, which is, you know, a, a modern, uh, again, a triangle as in a measuring uh, equipment. Uh, and I think I mentioned Aries. Anything about a bear in mythology instead of the plough? Thinking of the great bear. That's a very good question. Of course, we know that there was there were bears in Ireland. There were bear bones found around the time of the end of the Ice Age, probably around 10,500 uh, years ago. Um, I'm just trying to think of uh, something else that distracted me there for a moment, but I was trying to find... I was inclined to pull something off the shelf... Um, no, it has slipped my mind momentarily. I just don't want to. I want to make sure I don't uh, miss any of the questions. Would you know anything about the Arundati star? Says Jim Conway. Uh, no, but immediately, um, I'm not sure even what that is. The wife of the sage Vashista, one of the seven sages who are identified with the Ursa Major. She's identified with the Morning Star and also with the star Alcor. Yes, Alcor and, and Mizar are the double star in the handle of the plough. Uh, don't really, Jim. I'll have to go back to it, uh, to be honest. The Druids of the Welsh Triads exclaim, I am a serpent, and many religions over time and globe use the serpent. Yes, indeed. Of course, biblically, the serpent is connected with Satan and evil, <clears throat> um, but originally. Um, it meant something entirely different. The divergence concepts are beyond us and probably beyond science, but I do know what you mean and agree, a mystery, like trying to fit the sea in the thimble. Yeah, it, this is this is it. I, I I did say at the outset, and I wouldn't want you to think that uh, you know I was pretending that we're definitively saying anything about Irish constellations. We're not, um, because as I said, unfortunately, we don't have that, and it's so very very preciously rare to find a story and then an explanation of how that story relates to the sky. We have that with Shkri of Klam Ishna, uh, the track of the children of Ishna. But again, we don't have that in Ireland. Uh, it's, it's an amazing one. Helen Guinan is in the house. We didn't, oh, sorry, pardon me, Your Majesty, for uh, being tardy in my process. Uh, Prostrations. Yeah, well, I think one thing that cannot be disputed, maybe it can, but in my view, one of the things that can't be disputed is that the people who built the Boyne monuments uh, paid very close attention to what the sun was doing. In my view, they paid very close attention to what the moon was doing, and the moon has always been, to every culture, a very important 
calendrical astronomical object. The helping of the telling of time, not just in telling what time it is now, but in predictive uh, calendrical terms. If you see where the moon is going, you can tell you can tell a lot about where the sun is going to be in six months' time by looking at where the full moon is, or in three months' time by looking at the first quarter moon, and then the eclipse prediction and all of that stuff. But in order to have that kind of astronomy, you really need a backdrop. You need a grid upon which to map all this out. And that grid, of course, is provided by the stars, uh, depending on what way you group them into constellations. Moses picked up a serpent and it became a staff, says Neil. Yes, absolutely. And of course, the serpent wrapped around the staff is a symbol of uh, pharmac pharmacies all around the world today, isn't it? Um, just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything immediately because I know that we are running on uh, and I didn't mean to go on too much longer. Um, yes. So uh, when we say we think that, you know, the constellation we call Cygnus might have been seen as a swan in pre prehistoric Ireland, we only think that. We can't prove it. We can build a substantial uh, case for it, we think, uh, but it's a circumstantial case. It's based on circumstantial evidence. Uh, and I really, really do hope that there is somewhere in an obscure library, somewhere hidden, an old manuscript uh, copied down uh, by the monks of the medieval uh, period in which they tell us, well, here now is the lore of the stars uh, according to uh, the Irish. Uh, and if you think that, you know, if you think that we're just uh, plucking ideas out of the sky, uh, just bear with me for a moment. And I think I mentioned this again recently. Uh, bear in mind that one of the descriptions of Cúchollán in the Thoin, uh, uh says, Rise, mighty son of Ulster, now that your wounds have been healed, a fair man facing your foes. In the starlit ford of night, the starlit ford of night being the ford of the Milky Way, that crossing point where the sun, moon and planets uh, crossed the River Boyne, the heavenly River Boyne. Uh, one of the crossing points was above Orion uh, and he could be seen to control that uh, because his, 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 his hand is, is, is immersed in the river and it's like he's actually making it happen, the movements. And the other one, of course, being... Uh, at the feet of Ophiuchus, who is seen to be standing in the heavenly Boyne River. Uh, that, uh, you know, when you say the starlit ford of night, uh, to me that's uh, just one stop short of saying uh, this is uh, the place uh, where the ecliptic crosses the Milky Way in the night sky. Um Anyway, oh yeah, I know what it was. I was going to say uh, originally one of the one of the works that inspired me originally, especially when Richard and I were beginning our researches all those years ago, back in nineteen ninety nine, which seems like a, a lifetime ago now. Uh, one of the books that inspired me greatly was a book called Homer's Secret Iliad, in which the author described how uh, various sections of the Iliad were in fact referring to constellations of the sky. Just going to briefly see if I can find it in my collection. Yes, uh, two authors actually, Florence and Kenneth Wood, and it's called Homer's Secret Iliad, the Epic of the Night Skies Decoded. Uh, and so their thesis was that you can um, you can decode, as it were, uh, you can interpret the various passages of the Iliad as being related to various constellations and various parts of the sky. An interesting thesis. And again, uh, probably we're in the same boat uh, as uh, the woods uh, in that uh, we can't uh, definitively say um, you know, uh, with any certainty that this is the case, a healthy dose of speculation. In our case, one of the things that helps is that we know for a fact uh, that the monument builders of the Neolithic uh, were keen astronomers. It is the extent of that astronomical knowledge that is disputed, 
and of course the whole uh, notion of the uh, rotation of the nodes, the moon's nodes, and the prediction of eclipses is a very controversial one uh, because a lot of the modern scholars dismiss it as not uh, having had enough importance or being too complex uh, for the ancients to work out. And of course, I would dispute that. And uh, I saw Robin Edgar, I read a couple of Robin Edgar's comments there, and I'm sure Robin Edgar and several others would also dispute it uh, in relation to the significance of eclipses. Kelly Edmiston's quote from Oscar Wilde, all of us are in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Absolutely. Janet Moran says hello from just north of Boston. I think we have come to a close in our discussion about constellations. There are probably a few that I've missed. For instance, do you know that the very small southern hemisphere constellation called Crooks or the Southern Cross was partly visible in Ireland in the Neolithic? Uh, three of its four stars would have been visible from Newgrange uh, at the time uh, Newgrange was built which I think is fascinating and because of precession is no longer visible from Ireland and we distinctly think of it as a southern uh, hemisphere constellation but again this is the effect of precession up and down the, some things that are now below the horizon were once visible and some things that are now high in our sky will at some point in the future uh, be low again do you know that half in half the cycle of precession's time and precession is around let round it off at 26,000 years. In about 13,000 years' time, the only part of the constellation Orion that would be visible from Ireland is the top part of that upraised arm that appears to control the, uh, the, the, the sun, moon, and planets by throwing them along the ecliptic. Not a nice thought, but it is actually uh, right at its zenith now, uh, because on our summer solstice, the sun is in the hand of Orion. So R Orion is at its highest point. From here on in, it will only get lower and lower in our sky. But you and I don't have to worry about that because it ain't going to happen for a long time and we'll be long dead before it does. Anyway, thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was of some use. And again, you see how tentative the whole area is. But it's, I think, uh, an area very worthwhile exploring. And I have no doubt uh, that many firmer links will become established uh, in the future. And hopefully we will find that missing document that's possibly out there somewhere. Um, Rowan Grove says, soon we will be seeing Orion in the evening sky. Yes, indeed. If you wait up late enough uh, here in Ireland, I've begun to see him. Uh, there's word that Betelgeuse is fading again. It looks, I, I saw it the other night and it looked reasonably bright. Hopefully it won't uh, do what everybody thinks it might do. Hopefully it stays around for a lot longer. In the meantime, thanks for joining us. It's been wonderful. It's been a lovely episode tonight. Lots of interaction, a huge number of comments, and lovely to see you all in the house. Um, yeah, really, really delighted, actually. And look, uh, I will, as I said, I will be doing some impromptu lives. I'm not going back to daily live mitts. I just couldn't commit to it. Uh, but I certainly will, I promise you, do some more Um uh, impromptu uh, broadcasts between now and next week's episode. I think it's important because there are a lot of people now in lockdown scenarios uh, and uh, the numbers are going up here and they're going up everywhere else. Uh, and it is incumbent upon us all as an extended family of uh, friends uh, and acquaintances in this wonderful space that we call Live Irish Mits, that we look after not only ourselves, but everyone else. And how do we do that? We do all of the things that we've been asked to do. Wash our hands regularly, use hand sanitizer, uh, sneeze and cough etiquette. Uh, cough and sneeze into the crook or the, the back of your elbow, the, the crook of your arm. Um, sneeze into a tissue and make sure you dispose of it. And again, wash your hands after you've done that. Wear a mask if you're anywhere around people. If you're being told not to mix with people, then don't mix with people. Um, at the moment, only people from one other household are allowed to join us here in our household uh, under the current restrictions. So don't do anything silly. S keep yourselves safe and hopefully we'll see you before too long. And uh, there's a connection issue on Facebook, which is uh, uh, the universe's way of saying, hurry up and get finished. Uh, and so I will do that. Thanks, everyone. Have a great time. Uh, have a great week. Uh, to the Australian viewers who are ahead of us already in Tuesday, uh, good night to you. Ikawa Kolosov, Slong of Don't forget, Tog Kupoge. Take it easy. Until next time. In the meantime, we'll see you on one of the impromptus. This is Live Irish Myths. I'm Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland saying good night. Bye bye. <laughs>